Hello everyone people, today we're going to be talking about top 10 things that you should not do when you're in the UK. The only thing I know you should not do is bother the Queen's Guard, so I'm interested to see what this person has to say in this video. So subscribe to me here for more culture reactions specifically about the UK. Like this video so you know you enjoyed it and I can do more in the future. Check out the second channel which is linked down below. Make sure you DM me any video requests you have over on Instagram. All that being said, here we go into the top 10 things you should never do in the UK. I know you'll hate my accent, but I love it, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Aha! Here we go! Let's start by saying that in no way are we trying to scare you away from visiting the UK. But if you are a could tourist or an international student in the UK, then wouldn't it be better to know a few things that could offend people there? Yeah. We mean, you don't want to hurt anyone with your actions or words, <laughs> let alone get into trouble in a foreign land. People would understand <laughs> Wait. It take why would anybody in their right mind, regardless if you're, if you're in the UK or not, poop in someone's yard. I'm, that's funny. <laughs> ...to adjust to the new surroundings and customs. But if you want to save yourself from embarrassing situations as a newcomer in the UK, we have compiled a list of things that you should avoid doing there. Number one, mm. calling the United Kingdom England. Before you take the flight to anywhere in the UK, know its full form. You Okay, but I, I must admit though, I've gotten better. I know that the UK is four countries now. But back in the day, I definitely would have done that. What an embarrassment. <laughs> Stands for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Do you realize what this means? Yes. The UK consists of four countries. Scotland, yes. England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. Wales. Moreover, each country has its own distinctive culture, national identity, and yeah. government. I'm still working so on that. So before you begin your sentence with the English landscapes are, confirm that you really are in England and not Scotland, which is a separate country. Number two, I want ask to go to if they both, know the though. Queen. How would you feel if some tourist in the U.S. asked if you knew Donald Trump? <laughs> You'd call that person plain <laughs> stupid Freaking for dummy. assuming that everyone breathing the U.S. air knows the president. So how do you expect people in the U.K. to personally know the royal family? Oh, More she was gorgeous. More than 60 million people live in the U.K. and over 8 million... Hold on, was that the same queen? It, it does look like her, so I'm assuming it is, but she was pretty back in the day. Personally know the royal family. Not to say she's More ugly now. More million people live in the UK, and over 8 million of those live in Greater London alone. There is no London. way that these people know their monarch more than the internet knows. You won't offend people with this question, but will definitely make them laugh. In your okay. face. Number three, block the escalator. Escalators are common in most countries, and we don't give much thought oh, about the do's really? and don'ts while we are standing on it. Well, you'd be surprised to know that there is indeed a wrong way to stand on an escalator, at least in the UK. It is an unspoken rule in this part of the world that if you want to stand still, you should stay on the right-hand side. Huh. Yeah, that's not a thing here. If, if you stand where you want and if someone wants to walk up or get off quicker, they have to go around you. You don't get out of the way. I guess it's just a courtesy thing, really. But yeah, that's not a thing here. Why? Well, but good to the left-hand side of the escalator is reserved for those people who are in a hurry. You know, mm. the lot who believe that by running through the escalator and saving about 30 seconds, they would get to their destination <laughs> on time. Just remember, <laughs> if you don't want to be pushed past, then stay on the right. They would Number assault four, you? Jump a queue. Many of us don't give much importance to a queue. Shout out to the in-betweeners. No, the ones we see outside a dessert kiosk. Because, well, an ice cream craving can't wait. Mm. But don't do that while you're in the UK, simply because that is bad manners. Even if you think it is a petty thing and shouldn't annoy anyone, you aren't doing it here. Before you attempt any such adventure, know that those people ahead oh, in the boy. queue came here first and deserve to be served first. Plus, why do you want any inconvenience in the form of a fight? Yeah. Stay in the queue, wait for your turn, and all will go swiftly. Number five. Okay. Yeah, I can see how that's more specific to the UK, but at the same time, why would you jump a queue anywhere or a line? It's, again, a, just a humanity thing, I think. Pick up like, there's a only a certain car. type of person who would do we that. We don't mean to say that driving in this country is... Don't pick up a rented car. Number five, pick up a rented car. We don't mean to say that driving in this country is illegal, but you can get yourself and others in trouble by driving. Huh, we have created a nice bit of suspense here. We deserve a pat on the back. Jokes aside, the thing is that you will have to drive on the left side of the road here. And That's what I said too. In one of my other travel videos about the UK, I said I, I can't drive 
there. Not only because it's just going to be too overwhelming and I know I'm going to get in an accident, but driving on the opposite side of the road and right hand drive for that matter, it's a recipe for disaster. But also, how the heck am I going to get to the Highlands if I can't take an Uber? Y'all were saying you can't take Uber or Lyft anywhere in the UK except for London. So how am I supposed to get around? Come from a nation where the opposite is the norm, you might have a tough time learning this. When you are new to a place, such experiments are the last thing you should be doing, right? Plus, remember you don't know your way around, so you'd be consulting maps on a busy road yeah. while getting used to driving on the wrong side. Not to mention y'all's roundabouts. Oh my god, everything has to be a roundabout. It can't just be a cross intersection. Everything's curvy and just like, you have to yield and look this way for someone. Oh my god. Can you imagine yield and having to turn this way to see if someone's come? Oh, too much, too much. Number six, talk about money. You don't ask someone how much they earn or how much money they have in their pocket unless you are family or very close friends, right? Okay. Come on, that's basic decency. Yeah. People in the UK might feel offended if you ask too many questions about money. In fact, mm -hmm. boasting about your wealth is also not going to be appreciated. Mm -hmm. So keep the big bucks in your pocket. Yeah. Number seven, it's a respect thing inappropriately. Too. Meeting someone for the first time and experiencing that awkward situation <laughs> where you go for a hug while the other stops you with a handshake. Ever been there? If you don't want to find yourself in that situation in the UK, just go for a handshake because they aren't too comfortable making physical contact with strangers. Mm. Hugging and kissing on the cheek is reserved for people they know well and are comfortable with. But other cultures in, in Europe do do the... Or is that just something I learned in American media? Do y'all not actually kiss on the cheek the... Or is that just people from Paris? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, I'm okay what with the you handshake. say when someone asks you, How are you? By no means is this a cue that you can start off your saga of nasal allergies if you don't want the person to never see your face again. Every how are you is followed by fine, thank Good. you, and nothing else. Number eight. Okay. Fake Let me know if I'm the only person like this. I hate small talk. I don't really like formalities and it's partially because I don't care but at the same time like I feel like it's a waste of time like if we both arrive there to do something say we're meeting each other to work we're gonna spend freaking 10 minutes talking about the sky the weather hello how are you like I'd rather just get to the point you know let me know your thoughts your accent <laughs> y'all many... <laughs> hate when people fake your accent well, you must hate me then, because I do it about every video. I just did it then. Okay, oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I like doing it. It's funny. Not funny, but it's fun. Oh, God. And nothing else. <laughs> oh, eight, God. Fake their accent. No matter how many times you have practiced the British or Scottish accent, don't use it, because it probably isn't that good. People aren't okay. going to like it if you... But what is a British or Scottish accent? From y'all, I learned that every area, whether you're in Northern England or Southern England, West England, on the coast, everything has a different sound to it from where you're from. There's no one English or British accent. As for Scottish accent, I did one in the past and y'all said it was pretty good. So I think I'm scot-free there. But as for the English accent, I could do a very posh accent like this, or I could do a very thick one and say I'm from the South, you know? So what? You can't do a bad accent, because technically it will fit somewhere, right? I'm just trying to make myself feel better. ...their accent, and especially when you are doing it all wrong. You will make yeah. it look like you aren't a part of them, and are desperate to lose your identity and mix with them. What? Wouldn't it be better if you first make friends with natives of Wales, and then try a Welsh accent? Oh, Number a Welsh nine, accent. Voice I don't know what that is. about Brexit. We know that Brexit is the topic of discussion in pretty much the entire world. I don't but know you enough can't about be walking it. around spitting your views about it when you are in the UK. People there are directly related to it, and your mm. views can be taken personally. And what happens mm. when someone takes your casual opinion personally and in a negative light? Yes, they get offended and might beat you up. Okay, maybe we went too far with the beating up part, but you still don't want to risk it. Yeah. Number ten. Keep politicals with the to Queen's yourself. Guard. Did that bushy hat fool you? Oh, people, the Queen's Guard isn't your friend, and you aren't forgetting that. You may fool around with him a bit, and he won't pay much attention, let alone punish you. I would equate the Queen's Guard to the soldier we have. What was it? The, the sleeping soldier or the memorial of... 
um, you know, whatever. At the White House or in Washington, there is there's a cemetery, I guess you could call it, for our soldiers, and it's a very respected place. You don't touch the the, the stones. You don't you don't do anything. You don't lean on them or anything like that. If you do, you will get beat up or thrown. They don't care. They will assault you. So I would just use that same rhetoric for the Queen's Guard, which again I didn't know to respect them, I guess you could say, until I started reacting to culture stuff. So next time I come, I'll definitely do that or remember to do that. Respect them, I guess. There's a line drawn and you must never cross it because the consequences won't be pretty. Never. We repeat, Step back never from the touch Queen's the guard. guard. Because once you do that, prepare yourself for a world of hurt. Do you want that gun, the one that was fascinating you, to be pointed at you? But even, why would you touch someone? Like, you don't know them. This, that's just stupid. Why would you touch them, even if they weren't a Queen's Guard? What are you trying to do, you weirdo? If not, maintain a respectable distance from the guard. He deserves it. Yeah. How was your experience in the UK? Tell us. Thank you for asking. Okay. So y'all don't like when people do your accent. Well. Dang. Huh. Okay. I have to think about this from y'all's perspective. Do I like it whenever y'all do, or say an American accent is just either a really thick southern one or a girl from California or a New Yorker? I mean, obviously we all know America is so much more than those three places, but that is a big representation of our culture and our people. So I don't necessarily get offended when people equate America to those accents or those cultures. But just because that's my experience doesn't mean that it has to be y'all's. So really let me know if my accent offends y'all and I will try to not do it so much. Can't promise that I'll stop because honestly I do like it, but I'll try to wean off of it. Hope you liked the video. Bye.